It's five o'clock. You're listening to content developed by the GoPro Radio Network, the fastest growing network in the galaxy. GoPro Radio Network. Listen to the voices in your head. Are you ready for this? Good evening, good evening, good evening. It's Wednesday, May the 11th, 2016, and welcome to the BCS Experience. History, arts, culture, and politics in review and discussion. I'm Byron C. Saunders, your host with the most. The BCS Experience takes a look at our rich history. African American history. We're going to share with you some known and unknown historical facts and information from the past and connect the dots on how they have impacted on our present day events and how they will definitely shape our future as African Americans in this country and around the world. The BCS Experience, history, arts, culture, politics in review and discussion. This is internet radio and will be aired live every Wednesday from 5 to 6 p.m. from the studios of the Iron Metropolis Images on the GoPro Radio Network. You see, I'm really excited about this opportunity to talk to you all around the country and around the world. I want you to tune in every week on your computer or your phone and I want you to become a loyal listener and I personally invite you to lend your voices to this radio talk show to express your opinions on my weekly topics. This is Social Network Radio at its finest. Now here's the number for you to call to be a part of tonight's discussion. Call 347 347- 884-9839. Once again, that number to call is 347-884-9839. Wow, here's this week's topic. Oh my good, good, goodness. Powerful women of the civil rights movement who have confronted American racism with a fearless resolve to be the change factor in the treatment of African Americans yesterday, today, and yes, even tomorrow. Oh, this is a hot topic. We're going to learn a lot about some of the most powerful African American women who have really made a difference. All right, that's my show for this evening. Hey, my show is the new Underground Railroad Express. I'm making stops in your neighborhood. All aboard to freedom and to freedom land. All right, now before we get started, before we meet my guest, a little bit of history. We gotta put this all into context, ladies and gentlemen. All right, here's the date. It's a Saturday. It's January the 29th and the year is 1820. You see, on this date, we remember the birth of Harriet Ross Tubman in 1820. Now, she was a black abolitionist who escaped from slavery and returned to the South repeatedly to lead other African slaves to freedom. Originally named Araminta or Menti, Harriet Ross was born on Maryland's eastern shore. In 1844, she married John Tubman, a free black man. Now, resolved to escape the horrible conditions of slavery, she tried to convince her husband to join her, but he refused. Now she let, fled without him until coming to Pennsylvania, a free state. And in 1850, she made her first secret trip to Baltimore, where she rescued her enslaved sister and her two children. Now Tubman soon became allied with activists of the Underground Railroad. 
At, in at least 15 trips to the South between 1850 and 1860, she guided around 70 men, women, and children to freedom, including her entire family. Now, in her work, Tubman used medications to quiet crying babies and employed several disguises. After Congress passed the Fugitive Slave Act of 1850, which required northern states to return escaped slaves, Tubman settled runaways in what is now Ontario, Canada. Now, during the Civil War with the Union Army traveling to South Carolina, she served as a liaison between the soldiers and newly freed blacks, moving them towards self-sufficiency. And although she got a commendation from officers, she received no pay. After the war, Tubman returned to Auburn to care for her parents, and eventually she co converted her house to a residence for the old and poor. She spent many of her final years working on behalf of women's suffrage. Harriet Tubman died on March the 10th, 1913. And guess what? On April 20th, 2016, the U.S. Treasury Department removed Andrew Jackson from the $20 bill and replaced him with Harriet Tubman. Now that's a powerful, powerful sister. Fearless. And as she was quoted saying, she'd have freed even more slaves if they only knew that they were in slaves. Wow. Harriet Tubman. What a wonderful, powerful woman. That's what we're talking about today. Powerful sisters and freedom fighters who put their lives on the line and help to make a difference and make a change. All right, I wanna hear from you. So let's connect the dots and make sense out of all of this. Now, you can talk to me. Call me at 347-884-9839. Once again, that number to call, 347-884-9839. All right, tonight I have a very special guest that's joining us. And joining us in the GoPro Radio Studio this evening is my good friend, Missouri. Moyo and Baye, which means beautiful heart who sings and is a touring a powerful one woman stage play traveling all throughout the United States spreading the story of Fanny Lou Hamer's role with the Freedom Riders, which precipitated the passage of the Voter Rights Act of 1965. She is the winner of the 2002 Adelco Award, which is the Black Tony Awards here in New York City for her theatrical performance of the Fannie Lou Hamer story. This is the story on tonight's The BCS Experience. Now, I wanna hear from you. Like I said, we're gonna connect some dots here and make sense out of it all. You can talk, you can call and talk to me and you'll be able to talk to me in Missouri. So call 347-884-9839. Now, in Missouri, Moyo, and Baye. Who is she? This is an introduction. I just love the way she sent this to me. Healing through Sound Music Inc. presents in Missouri, Moyo, and Baye. In Missouri, Moyo, and Baye's, which means beautiful heart who sings, is touring a powerful one woman stage play traveling throughout the United States, spreading the story of Fannie Lou Hamer's role with the Freedom Riders, which precipitated the passage of the Voters Rights Act of 1965. Now she, as I said, is the winner of the 2002 Adult Co Award because she won that for doing Fannie Lou Hamer. And she was also one of the lead actresses in the hit film Sankofa, the only American film to date that depicts an African slave revolt. That's right. Among her many performances is international recognition for being the healing voice chosen to sing for the 10th year commemoration of 911 in 2011 at none other than the United Nations and accompanied by the New York Symphony, City Symphony Orchestra commemoration of the victims of 911 at the United Nations. Now recently she gave a dynamic closing tribute 
to the Ohio State House, and that was in 2014, a Civil Rights Commission Hall of Fame intro inducting ceremony, and it is with great pleasure. We bring to you the healing voice of Missouri Moyo Mbaye. Welcome to the BCS Experience, Missouri. Thank you so much, Byron. It is an honor to have you on my show. I think the music is a little loud there back there, guys. So let's make sure we can hear Missouri. Bring that down just a little bit. There we go. So Missouri, as I said, it's an honor to have you on my show. And, and where are you these days? I am in Cincinnati, Ohio, believe right. it or not. All right. That, do you know, <laughs> Missouri, that was one of the stops along the underground railroad and for those of you who do not know this the underground railroad museum is in cincinnati ohio yes um that's one of the um most incredible things is seeing that river um that our people african people crossed yes i started to say our people but we're all one we're all one amen there is no separation that's right so that the African people cross running for freedom. And um, it's the most incredible um, energy still there to know that one side was where you were a slave and the other side you were free. That's and right. even when they got to the other side, they were still chased. Yes. You know, they were property. They were considered people's property. I, I know. So that's, that's something we should bear in mind. And a lot of people drowned in that river. That's right. Now, a now, lot of people drowned in that river trying to cross it. Now, in Missouri, where are you from originally? I said that. I'm from Patterson, New Jersey. All right. So a homegirl back here in Jersey. All right. Patterson. I'm a Jersey girl. I'm headed, I'm <laughs> headed south and we're moving to Atlanta. But at heart, I am an East Coast person. I am East Coast all the way, Byron. Well, tell me, in Missouri, your travel your 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 becoming an a a an actress tell us a little bit about yourself and how all of this came together because you're an amazing woman you stand on the shoulders of people like Harriet Tubman and 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 um, Fannie Lou Hamer and and um, uh, uh, Angela D Davis I mean you're an amazing tell me your story how did it all get started in Missouri well, it got started when I was a little girl. I always wanted to be an actress. That's what I saw for myself. And, uh, you know, being growing up in the 60s and uh, in the volatile times of people being killed and b churches being blown up, I still had that vision of myself being an actress. And fast forward, I went to nursing school. I became a nurse. I moved to France. I lived in France, I sang, I grew up singing in the church, mm -hmm. and uh, perhaps later on I'll sing a little bit for you. Uh oh, watch out. And, um, <laughs> and also, you may be, I sent you in the email on uh, my MP3 file where you can play a little bit of the first song from the play, which is Battle Hymn of the Republic. Oh, we're going to play that at the end of the show. It is powerful, people. Oh, my goodness. Oh, That's, uh, I'm tagging out with that piece, okay? And I have used, I have some other pieces of you, of course, at the United Nations. And we, I got to take a break coming up here in another well, a minute and a half. Um, so, Missouri, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tease folks, kind of, and let them hear you with the New York uh, Symphony Orchestra singing uh, Still I Rise at the United Nations celebrating the victims of 911 and let's just roll that tape this my friends is the beautiful heart who sings Missouri Moyo Ambaye Try, I 
I got to take a break here, folks. That's why she's called Beautiful Heart Who Sings. And when we come back, Are you ready for this? oh, you'll be ready for this because we're going to talk some more yeah. about this amazing woman right after these very important come messages on. from GoPro Radio. Yeah. You're listening to content developed by the GoPro Radio Network, the fastest growing network in the galaxy. GoPro Radio Network. Listen to the voices in your head. Why are you paying for radio? Are you serious? 
GoPro Radio offers content for free. Go to www.goproradio.com and listen to original, irreverent, and exceptional talk shows. It's free. Go to www.goproradio.com now. It's that simple and free. www.goproradio.com. Listen to the voices in your head. Oh, and did I mention? It's free. You're listening to content developed by the GoPro Radio Network, the fastest growing network in the galaxy. GoPro Radio Network, listen to the voices in your head. All right, already we're back on the BCS experience. Are you ready for this? I am so ready for this. Are you ready for this? We're talking about powerful women of the civil rights movement who confronted American racism with the fearless resolve to be the change factor in the treatment of African Americans yesterday, today, and yes, even tomorrow. We started off with a bit of history about Harriet Tubman, a very powerful, strong woman, and an introduction of tonight's guest, Mzuri Moyo Mbaye, which means beautiful heart who sings. And we just heard her beautiful voice sung, singing, and still I rise in the United Nations celebrating 911 victims. What amazing amazing journey. Imzuri, tell us a little bit about yes. that moment of singing at the United Nations. What an honor. Well, you know, I was, um, at that time in my life, I had just lost my mom, and I felt like she was there in the room. Yes. And it was her favorite song. She used to listen to it every night before she went to sleep. Oh, wow. And so it was the power of my mother and the power of the song about no matter what happens that we still must rise yes and it was just such a monumental moment that i cannot begin to describe how i felt singing that song yes for those people those diplomats and people from all over the world who had come there to commemorate the 9-11 victims yes and it was like my saying, no matter what, we still have to rise. We have to bring ourselves about the ashes, out the dust, and we have to rise. That's right. So that's what I, if I could describe it just a little bit, was what I was feeling. Well, I, I'm, I'm an, I was so moved by the presentation. We brought tears to my eyes because I understand what, you know, that, that heartfelt voice and the song itself but didn't know the backstory of your mom's favorite song and yes you channeled another one of those strong women that's what we're celebrating right now i mean that's why you are a guest on my show because i sense not just an actress who has done some powerful performances of some very famous women but you yourself in missouri have been on the path of success and a powerful voice yourself. Now, I got, I'm gonna give this next piece of history because we're gonna segue into your character and your performance and portrayal of Fannie Lou Hamer. Now, we got another caller on the line. I'm gonna bring them in in a minute, but let's talk about Fannie Lou Hamer. Here's the story on Fannie Lou. It, the date is, it's a Saturday, and it's October the 6th, 1917. And it was Fannie Lou Hamer who was born on this date in 1917. Now, she was an African-American civil rights activist. Born Fannie Lou Townsend in Montgomery County, Mississippi. She was the last of 20 children. Wow. In a family of sharecroppers, she began chopping and picking cotton as a child on a plantation in the Mississippi Delta. She lived and worked there until 19. 1962 when she was fired because she attempted to register to vote. She and her family were also forced to move from the plantation and in 1963 Hamer did register to vote and committed herself to civil rights activism. She began working for the Student Nonviolent Courting Committee, better known as SNCC, and organizing voter registration campaigns in the Mississippi Delta. And in 1964, white members of the Democratic Party in Mississippi continued the tradition of refusing to accept blacks in their delegation to the National Party Convention. 
Fannie Lou Hamer and others formed the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party. And the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party sent 68 delegates to the National Convention to challenge the white Democrats' right to represent Mississippi. Hamer recounted for the convention the harassment that she and other blacks experienced when trying to register to vote in Mississippi in a nationally televised interview about her experiences with police brutality. Democratic Party officials offered the black Mississippians two convention seats. Hamer and the Mississippi Freedom Dele Democratic Party, however, rejected the compromise offer and went home. Then the challenge by them resulted in a pledge from the Democratic Party not to seat any delegate to the 1968 National Convention, which was held in Chicago, who had been chosen through racially discriminatory means. It was also made Hamer a national celebrity. After 1964, Hamer continued to work for black voting rights and black candidates for public office in Mississippi. She also founded social service organizations and initiated economic development efforts, including the Freedom Farms Corporation, established in 1969 to help poor families raise food and livestock. Hamer became a national figure in 1964 with a speech to the Democratic Convention in which she recounted the pop voter discrimination and violence against blacks in her home state of Mississippi. She became a national symbol of the participation of poor Southern blacks in the civil rights movement. Fannie Lou Hamer died on March 14, 1977. And for those of you who do not know Fannie Lou Hamer, you will know her by the phrase that she gave to the world, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Oh my goodness. Now, my goodness, M. Zuri, you and I have a yes. you and I have a connection, my sister, to Fannie Lou Hamer. You know I'm doing the a film project on Fannie Lou Hamer, so well, that's that moving. is so exciting, Byron. I tell you, <laughs> and you, I'm just I'm just thrilled. I have to have some kind of role in that. Oh, movie. oh, absolutely, <laughs> without a doubt. I mean, I, see, God brings us together for divine purposes. And as you and I well know, and it's really amazing that in, a, in, in, in the end of this month, the story of Lyndon Baines Johnson is going to be on HBO, okay? And wow. it is Fannie Lou Hamer who helped to change the, the, the face of the Democratic Party because prior to uh, the 64 convention, throughout the South, Democrats ruled, and as a result of Fannie Lou Hamer's intervention into the Atlantic City Convention in 1964, trying to bring to the convention the 68 delegates as part of the Mississippi delegation as Democrats, the Dixiecrats, as they were then known, switched parties to the Republican Party, and that, folks, is why today the South, throughout the entire South, what used to be a Democratic-held uh, South is now all Republican. Fannie Lou Hamer people, SNCC, wow. Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, the, the so-called militant wing of Southern Christian Leadership Conference, for which, and for which um, Julian Bond, uh, John Lewis, Fannie Lou Hamer, these are the people who were the young Turks back then, who put their lives on the line. And it was as a result of her intervention at that time and trying to register folks in Mississippi that we got the 65 Voting Rights Act. Now, in Missouri, your journey as Fannie Lou Hamer, tell us about that. Well, you know, I have to say I had a director, a young woman, uh, at the time, and she said to me, Mzuri, would if you had anything to take that you would want people to take away from this play, what would it be? And I would say to vote, to make sure every. So my play has been grown and groomed 
and loved around that subject of voting. And then I see President Barack Obama yes. before he went to Harvard. That's what he was doing. Yes. His whole thing was the vote. Yes. So I'm just just shouting out to President Obama. Please, President Obama, bring the Fannie Lou Hamer story to the yes. White House before you and Lady Obama leave. You have got to bring Mrs. Hamer to the White House. That's right. The Fannie Lou Hamer story, sick and tired of being sick and tired That's right. to the White House to really mark all the great work that you did in Chicago. That's right. You, you are absolutely right, and, and, you, and what better to bring a live performance. The movie will speak for itself because she has a story, Fannie Lou Hamer has a story that must be told. But seeing a, an incredible performance by an incredible talent like yourself uh, in Missouri, portraying this woman who was fearless. I mean, F Fannie Lou, folk, folks, was beaten to almost near death in a jail cell. Not For, only her, but those young kids that were like 13 and 14 years right. old. That's right. So, so this is, they as you're saying. They were young kids. Absolutely, absolutely. I gotta take another break here. But when we come back in Missouri, I'm gonna play a little bit of your commemor commemorating Miss Fannie Lou Hamer and let people get a sense of who you are as an actress. So folks, stay with us and call her. I'll get you in a few minutes. You're listening to all of this on the BCS Experience. So don't go away. I'll be right back. You're listening to content developed by the GoPro Radio Network, the fastest growing network in the galaxy. GoPro Radio Network. Listen to the voices in your head. We are an amazing people. Rooted in Africa, the cradle of human civilization. Descendant of the awesome men and women who made a way out of no way. People steeped in the values of truth, justice, respect, harmony, balance, reciprocity, and order. But 400 years of enslavement, Jim Crow, and racism, fueled by the lie of black inferiority, have taken their toll. The result? Too much pain. Too much hurt. Too much loss. We owe our ancestors, ourselves, and our children so much more than this. Join the movement for emotional emancipation, healing, and wellness for black people. Go to communityhealingnet.org and take the pledge to defy the lie and embrace the truth. That's communityhealingnet.org. Our children and our ancestors are waiting. You're listening to content developed by the GoPro Radio Network, the fastest growing network in the galaxy. GoPro Radio Network, listen to the voices in your head. All right, we're back on the BCS experience. Are you ready for this? You've got to get ready for this. All right, I'm about to roll the tape. We're going to see my friend Imzuri Moyo Ambaye in her signature piece doing Fannie Lou Hamer and a little bit of commentary from the folks who really love her. Take a listen and look at this. For generations, black history was an oral tradition passed down by the stories and experiences of people like Fannie Lou Hamer. A pivotal figure in the 1960s civil rights movement whose name is not well known, but whose voice is once again being heard on college campuses across the country through a powerful one-woman show presented by performer Missouri Moyo. Most people don't know who she is, and I was moved by her story. Fannie Lou Hamer spoke for the people who were the voiceless, the poorest people in the United States. An activism born of a simple revelation that she had in 1960s Mississippi when she learned that black people are allowed to vote. They were surprised. They did not know that they could vote. And she was beaten severely for registering blacks to vote. Something all of America heard about at the 1964 Democratic National Convention, the part we want to live. where her speech was a major impetus in passing the Voting Rights Act the next year. That's just a testament to um, our legacy as Africans in America 
how we don't let anything stop us. A resolve that the voice of Fannie Lou Hamer will continue to foster in young people. During the shows, the NAACP is on campus and they register young people to vote, so that's, that's what I, I do. There's a saying, if you don't know where you came from, you don't know where you're going. So it's always good to keep us grounded as to who we are. I'm Don Pollock with a look back and forward in my world. Amen. I'm telling you, people, the civil rights movement is not dead. It is very much alive, and it is alive in Black Lives Matter. It is the forward motion that we're moving this story into the world, back into the forefront where it needs to be, because we're about to have a convention of Democrats and Republicans, and oh my goodness, Missouri, you seeing what's going on in the TV and you know Trump and all this other crap that's all across the country, so why did you, you were about to tell us why you picked Fannie Lou Hamer to tell that story. Uh, do you remember Gil Noble? Absolutely. Gil Noble had Fannie Lou Hamer on his show. Yes. Talking about what had happened to her. I happened to tune in that Sunday. It must have been or in the 80s. Mm -hmm. And I was taken aback by her story. And my spirit said, you have got to write something about this woman. I said, God, but I'm not a writer. All of a sudden, Byron, maybe a few years later, I started hearing lines from my play came to me. My back may have been worn by thousand pound days and six generation of fangers have been frayed by cotton picking, cotton picking. And many a human story have been crushed and splattered by hatred and racism on the Senator Jame O. Eastland plantation, but my vision have not been clouded by the misuse of power, for I could see a new day coming on an old blooded horizon. Wow. That appeared in my head. Wow. Okay. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> and folks, because... And by the way, yes, for yes. you New Yorkers that want to see the play, I am going to be at Reverend Floyd Blake's church... There you go. Come in on. ...in Queens, New York in September. There we go. And it's appropriate time for it to be seen because we got to register people to vote. Folks, I'm telling you, we cannot allow a demagogue like Donald Trump and the GOP to take any office, not just president. I'm saying any office. We have the votes, people. But we've got to register. We have got to get out. We've got to get in line. We have got to declare that we are sick and tired of being sick and tired. Sick and tired. Just like <laughs> Fannie Lou. And that's why it's important that you see this performance by M. Zuri because she is not just recreating a, 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 a story from the past, it's right now, people. It is so right now. And, and like it's my- really right now. It really is. And like my film, that I, my screenwriter, which I'm, I hope the two of y'all get a chance to meet, Rosebud Dixon Green, who's in Atlanta, Georgia. She's in her 70s, and it's a very powerful film script. And we're gonna get it made, because together in Missouri, we're forming a pack right here. We're bringing it- Oh, yes, we're Byron. We're bringing it together. We're gonna get this film done. That's we're right. We're gonna get your film done. We're going to get you connected with uh, Alfre Woodard. I heard she's working on a Fannie Lou yes, Hamer project. Yes. So if we can put all of our love for Fannie Lou Hamer together. Amen. That's what it's going to take. We could grow this thing real big. And, and you know what's really interesting? Because in the piece that you did, Sankofa, it's given rise and for folks, I'm not talking about D.W. Griffith's Birth of a Nation. I'm talking about the new one that talks about the Nat Turner Rebellion. You see, we've been bamboozled into thinking that we haven't, we've been so happy as slaves. Oh, hell no. We've got stories just no. like 12 Years a Slave, just like Birth of a Nation telling the story about Nat Turner and the rebellion. These were not riots, people. These were revolts against slavery. And that's what it's been. What happened in Ferguson, what happened in Baltimore, what happens in New Orleans, what has happened in Chicago. It's not an accident, people. This is 400 years of oppression and we don't riot. We have uprisings. We have slave there revolts. You go. 
I got a phone caller. I got a caller on the line. Let's bring someone in. Welcome to the BCS uh -huh. experience. Hello, and who are you? Hey, how you doing? This is Zach. Um, I'm, I'm, I want to talk to you guys on behalf of the young people. Yes, sir. So I'm, just, I'm just trying to give you um, my perspective on a young black male in the urban community. Yes, sir. And from my perspective, I, I've been watching the whole show. And from my perspective is, how do you guys feel? What, what are your views about um, young people who choose not to vote because they feel as though their vote wouldn't count? Okay, Zach, where are you from? Where are you calling from? I'm from the Bronx. That's okay, the boogie down Bronx. All right, I'll, I'll give my little pointer and then in Missouri, tell them what you got need to hear because folks, not those who choose not to vote is not rebellion. Okay, let me just tell you right up front, it is not rebellion. In fact, it's a, it's, it's a spit in the face of people like Fannie Lou Hamer and Harriet Tubman and Angela Davis and Coretta Scott King and and uh, I, I, I could go on and on and on. It's not rebellion. It's called uh -huh. it's called giving in because we have the vote. That's what I'm trying to impress upon you. If you put all the African Americans, Latinos, Asians, LGBT, just those people who have been disenfranchised by the Republican Party and we all come together. Do you know that we will all not only be able to vote in the president, we will also be able to take over Congress and state houses all across this country. So please, choosing not to vote is not rebellion. It is only surrendering to the forces of evil. In Missouri, would you like to tell us your I'm side of it? I'm going to invite, yes, I'm kinda... going to invite the young man to my show. Okay. Um, in September, can you hear me, Byron? I can hear you, darling. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking. Uh, I'm going well. to invite the young man to my show in Queens, New York, in September at the Reverend Floyd Flakes Church. Please give me your email. I want you okay. to see the Fannie Lou Hamer story, and if you can walk away from my play right. and tell me you don't want to vote again, I'll be able. I'll listen. Yeah, well, honestly, it's not really me. I'm pretty much, I'm, I'm well equipped with, you know, knowledge and history and those type of things. But my thing is, how do I reach my peers when it comes to them saying that they don't want to do as well? I, don't, I, need, I need something to help them because everybody isn't as interested in history that's around me as I am. You know, I need to find a new way to break through to people that's my age and people a little bit younger than me because they actually listen to me. I'm actually a voice. But I need, like, some new methods. Okay. You know? So maybe going to your play, maybe I need to bring people with me so they can see. You have to you know, bring so them to the play. You have got to come to Reverend Floyd Flake's church in Queens, New York in September. I don't have a date, but if you'll give me your email before we hang up, I'm going to make mm -hmm. sure you and your friends get a front row seat. And if they can leave out of that play and tell me they don't want to vote anymore, I'll be, I want them to tell me how they can say it. And, and here's we'll something. have to have a test to test. And Zach, here's That's something perfect. else. Here's something else to take with you. Black Lives Matters, okay? That's the new catchphrase of the day. And just so that you know, Black Lives Matters is a extension of the civil rights movement, not just a beginning yeah. of something new. Black Lives Matter is, is the same thing that Nat Turner was rebelling against. It's the same thing and the same reason why Rosa Parks sat in the front of the bus, not the back of the bus. It's the same reason why today Barack Hussein Obama not only got elected once, but re-elected. And here's the reason why. There was an attempt in this country by the billionaires to overthrow our country and buy it by spending all the money. Do you know it's not money that will control this country? It is people who get up and vote. If we yeah. stand together and, and stand up and vote, they cannot rule us. So Black Lives Matters is a very critical phase of our civil rights movement engaging young people. That's not an accident. They are sick and tired of being sick and tired of being sick and tired. So they're standing <laughs> up, yeah. you know, they're stand and encourage them to keep standing up. All right, I gotta take a break here. And when we come back, I got okay. one more piece of history for you. 
And and that's a, a freedom rider, a sister who is All right, fierce. thank you, guys. Zach, I thank, thank you, you for calling in. All right. Folks, okay. you're listening to the BCS Experience. Oh, this is a powerful show. We're come talking on. about, come on now. It's talking about freedom yeah. and freedom land. We'll be right back after these important messages. You're listening to content developed by the GoPro Radio Network. The fastest growing network in the galaxy. GoPro Radio Network. Listen to the voices in your head. The views and opinions expressed on GoPro Radio Network shows are solely those of the speakers and are not necessarily the views or opinions of GoPro Radio Network Inc. or its affiliates. These broadcasts are provided on the understanding that they do not constitute professional advice or services. Individuals who speak on these broadcasts express their own opinions, experiences, and conclusions. GoPro Radio Networks and its affiliates do not necessarily endorse or oppose any particular opinion or conclusion discussed in these broadcasts. You may not edit or modify or redistribute these broadcasts in any way without the express permission from GoPro Radio, LLC. GoPro Radio assumes no liability for any of your activities in connection with our broadcast or for your use of these broadcasts in connection with your website, computer, smartphone, tablet, iPad, or future listening devices. GoPro Radio Network. Listen to the voices in your head. You're listening to content developed by the GoPro Radio Network, the fastest growing network in the galaxy. GoPro Radio Network, listen to the voices in your head. All right, my friends, the last segment, we're coming home. Are you ready for this? We're taking you home to freedom and to freedom land. Oh, yeah. I'm talking to my dear friend, Mzuri Moyo Ambaye a beautiful actress, a sister from Patterson, New Jersey. And her name means beautiful heart who sings. She's an amazing actress, an Adelco award winning, that's the Tonys of Tonys for New York City. So she came and took New York by storm and now she's going all across the country doing the story of Fannie Lou Hamer, a very fierce sister, but I got a history of another sister who you need to know because she's modern, she's still alive, she's still with us, and if it wasn't for her, some of the things that we are t- discussing today about whose shoulders are you standing on, and Missouri is standing on this sister's shoulders. All right, the date. It's January 26, 1944, and on this date, 1944, Angela Davis was born. She is an African-American educator and political activist from Birmingham, Alabama. Angel Yvonne Davis lived in a section of town called Dynamite Hill because of the violence used by white on black to maintain residential segregation. Both of her parents were educators working with the local NAACP and then instilling in their children not to accept the social oppression that American society gave black people. Now, when she was 15, Davis left Birmingham to attend the Elizabeth Irwin School in New York City. Davis also attended Brandeis University, where Marxist philosophy influenced her. And after graduating in 1961, she was further impacted as a social activist by the bomb killing of four black Sunday school girls in Birmingham in 1963. Davis began her doctoral studies in philosophy at the jo- Johann Wolfgang von Goethe University in Frankfurt, Germany, but returned to the United States in 1967. And when she decided that she could no longer stay away from the growing American racial conflict. Davis relocated to Southern California to work on her master's degree at the University of San Diego, and it was during this time that she became involved with the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, also known as SNCC, the Black Panthers, and the Communist Party. Though hired in 1969 to teach philosophy at UCLA, Davis was fired soon afterwards by the, their Board of Regents and then Governor Ronald Reagan for her affiliation with the Communist Party. Though her case was appealed and overturned by the Supreme Court, by that time she was in hiding because of an incident at Soledad Prison. In August 1970, George Jackson and his brother Jonathan, prisoners at Soledad, attempted to escape and were killed. The weapons were traced to Davis. For two months while underground, she was 
on the FBI 10 most wanted list. And after apprehension, she was jailed for almost a year and a half before being tried for murder and conspiracy. In June 1972, Davis was acquitted of both charges in a highly publicized trial. She remained politically active while resuming her academic career at San Francisco State University. Davis also ran for vice president in 1980 and 1984 on the Communist Party ticket. And as a professor and an author, she has written several books. They include If They Come in the Morning, 1971, Women, Race, and Class, 1983, and Women, Culture, and Politics, 1989. Her autobiography, Angela Davis, an autobiography was published in 1974 and reissued in 1988. Angela Davis. Oh my goodness. In Missouri, you stand on the shoulders of some extremely powerful women. That's all I can wow. tell you. Wow. You sister. know, I, um, I have a story about Angela Davis. Yes, ma'am. That my brothers used to tease me, mm -hmm. and this is a little bit off the, you know, off the beaten path of politics. But I guess back then hair was political too. Yes, it was. But I wanted an Angela Davis afro. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and there, my brothers always say, "You ain't gonna get, you can't get no Angela. You can't get no Angela. You get, <laughs> you know." <laughs> so when I see her, I see that huge, that beautiful, beautiful afro. Yes. And the power of a woman that they tried to oppress, but yes. because of her know-how, because of her education, and because of her determinedness, she won. That's right. She won. She won. She was innocent from the get-go, and she won her case. That's right. She won. Now, I got to play. And a, because she, Yes. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Go ahead, Nunzer. And because she stood up to yes. power... They tried to get her, but they couldn't. They couldn't. That's right. Now, these women, and I want people to hear from Fannie Lou herself. This is a, a short clip, Fannie Lou Hamer's powerful testimony on Freedom Summer. Folks, this is why you must vote. This is why we celebrate Fannie Lou Hamer, and this is why Missouri is doing her life story. Roll that tape. The testimony before the Credentials Committee, the FDP had a lineup of very different people. They had Rita Schwerner, the widow of Mickey, who had been killed in Neshoba County. They had Martin Luther King. Everybody knew King. The seating of the delegation from the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party has political and moral significance far beyond the borders of Mississippi are the halls of this convention. But the highlight of the testimony was that of Fannie Lou Hamer. The sharecropper who had been evicted from her plantation had come to symbolize the Mississippi movement. Mr. Chairman, and to the Credentials Committee, it was the 31st of August in 1962 that 18 of us traveled 26 miles to the county courthouse in Indianola to try to register to become first class citizens. We was met in Indianola with, by policemen. The president, Lyndon Johnson, he's not afraid of Martin Luther King's testimony. He's afraid of Fannie Lou Hamer's testimony. And so he decides that the country should not see her testify live. Johnson is in the White House, and he convened an impromptu press conference. We will return to this scene in Atlantic City, but now we switch to the White House and NBC's Robert Gorowski. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. On this day, nine months ago. He did it knowing that they would break away, thinking he might announce who his choice of vice president was going to be. Instead, he gets up there and he announces, get this, he announces that it's nine months to the day since, since Governor Connolly, who was there, was shot along with President Kennedy. So he announced a nine-month anniversary. Everybody's scratching their heads. Thank you very much. And then he leaves. 
And by that time, Annie Lou Hamer's testimony was over. However, it backfired on Johnson because it became a story that she had been taken off television and in the news that night and for, for days afterwards, they replayed her testimony. I was carried to the county jail and put in the booking room. They left some of the people in the booking room and began to place us in sale. She had Mississippi in her bones. Martin Luther King or the SNCC field secretaries, uh, they couldn't do what Fannie Lou Hamer did. They couldn't be a sharecropper and express what it meant, right? And that's what Fannie Lou Hamer um, did. And it wasn't too long before three white men came to my cell. One of these men was State Highway Patrol. He said, we're going to make you wish you were dead. My God, my people, my people, you have to understand and appreciate the sacrifices made by this woman, made by Angela Davis, made by Harriet Tubman, made by Missouri. I'm telling you, people, we have to vote. I got a caller on the line in Missouri. Who's calling? I got to bring this to a close, but who's on the line? Welcome to the BCS Experience. Who's joined us? Hello? You're there. Okay, you're connected. Okay. If you don't want to talk, you're just listening. That's okay, too. Folks, in Missouri, in Missouri, in Yes, Missouri, Byron, I want to tell Missouri. people to come see my show in Washington, D.C. Go ahead, darling. At, at the um, African American Civil War Museum, yes. 1925 Vermont Avenue Northwest. That's going to be Saturday, May 21st at 4 p.m., followed by the VIP reception. There will be lots of VIPs there. President Obama perhaps will be there, him and Lady Obama. Yes. So I want everybody to come out support Dr. Smith. Uh, his, it's Founders Day. For the African Civil War Museum, they're going to be opening up the Susan B. Anthony Fannie Lou Hamer Wing Absolutely. of the museum, and I will be performing my signature piece, the Fannie Lou Hamer story, Sick and Tired of Being Sick and Tired. In Missouri, so, Moyo Ambaye, Sick and Tired of Being Sick and Tired, Fannie Lou Hamer, and, and folks, right. and, and she's dynamite, and I want you to hear this next piece which is amazing as we go close our show with battle him as sung by none other than the beautiful heart who sings herself in Missouri Moyo Ambaye roll that tape thank you in Missouri God bless you thank you bless you amen Ninety seconds.
Anthony Baez, born in Puerto Rico, so the New York City police decided his life should end. Cause a football accidentally touched them. Eleanor Ross, she was only 67 years old. Now no one will ever get to hear the stories she could have told and no, her grandchildren won't get to hear her sing. None of her songs. Cause she was shot up by the New York City police like she had done something wrong. You see, they all done called me from my grave and they, they just won't let me rest. They say, Fanny do we think you got something to say. We think you need to tell them, tell them about the struggle that we live. Did the job never forget? growing network in the galaxy. GoPro Radio Network. Listen to the voices in your head.